Make sure you use hashtag NFL or Super Chat, and make sure you watch our live shows Monday and Wednesday, 4 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Pacific, because that's how you get your questions featured on our show. So we go live, and we make you guys uh, ask us questions, or if you Super Chat, we'll put you on the show. All right, the first one's coming in here from Wilson Hensley. If both Chase and Pitts are gone before six, does Miami trade down into the teams with a quarterback-needy team like Chicago or crappy New England? Quarterback value is greater than pick six. So I think it comes down to what do they actually think of a guy like Devonta Smith. If they're confident Devonta Smith is the guy that Tua wants and that they need, I actually think that they end up going with him because of the connection. Jalen Waddles really saw it as well. But also, if I was Miami and those two guys were off the board, I would be 100% open to the idea of trading down. The issue is... For Chicago to go all the way up, man, they'd have to give up a lot of picks, and even for New England as well. I'd be looking, though, at New England. I'd be looking at a team potentially like a Chargers, also a team like the Denver Broncos. All right, we got T-Man. What up, my dude? If the Seahawks sign Alden Smith, do you think they'll move Kerry Hyder to DT and start Alden Smith and make Mayoa his backup? I mean, if I'm being real with y'all, I get that Alden Smith is, is a fun player. He's more of a name. I'd still rather have Benson Mayoa as my starting edge rusher, but... Maybe maybe not even use him as like a true starter. Just interchange Smith and Mayoa. And yes, I do think this maybe kicks Hyder in where he's going to play DT and still going to be able to play his edge role a little bit more. But I mean, like, let's face it. And, and realistically, I don't want to even use the word starter. Seattle's got a bunch of veterans, a bunch of older guys. They're going to put guys in. They're going to put guys out. So I, don't, I wouldn't really expect one guy to have a lot of snaps. Don't be, a, don't be shocked if they just keep moving guys in and out to keep them fresh. All right, we got Jace. Why do some CBS mock drafts have the Stanford quarterback going in the first round? It's because all it takes is for one guy to fall in love with one certain prospect, and then they're going to see him go up. I will say this. If you're looking at CBS mock drafts, you're doing it all wrong. CBS is one of the worst companies when it comes to mock draft stuff, and you're talking about Davis Mills here, 6'4", 212-pounder from Stanford. I mean, you're talking about somebody who doesn't, hasn't even started 15 games, like – does he look like a prototypical quarterback? Yes, he does. But he is not going to be, I think, a very reliable starting QB. His name, he's been going up and up in boards. But if you want good mock drafts, another reason to subscribe to Chat Sports. And also, if you want a good mock draft simulator, it's PFN. So speaking of quarterbacks here, out of these two, Aaron Rodgers or Russell Wilson, who do you think gets traded first? If you're like, you know what, man, I don't think either of these quarterbacks get traded first. I want you to type N for neither. Now, one of the things that I love to be able to do here on Chat Sports Shows is always talk about hypotheticals. And we've done plenty of shows around Rodgers. We've done plenty of shows around Wilson. But who do you think ends up getting traded first? I'm not saying in 2021. I could be talking about 2022, 2023. Which quarterback out of Rodgers or Russell Wilson ends up getting traded first? And if you want to ask me some trade questions around Rodgers, around Wilson, remember, all you got to do is use hashtag NFL or you can super chat. If I was a betting man... I might actually go here and sit W for Wilson. All right, let's go to Joel. What up, my man? Should the Broncos hold off on a quarterback and try to trade for Rodgers or Russ next year? All right, there's, there's our Russ question. So if I was Denver, would I try to hold off on a quarterback? Yes, yes, I would. As much as I don't really think Drew Locke is the answer, you still got to be able to see what he has because last year he didn't have his main guy, Cortland Sutton, and I just want to see what he can do with all his pieces there. But if I was one of the quarterbacks like a Rodgers or a Russell Wilson and I saw Cortland Sutton, K.J. Hamler, Noah Fant, and a halfway decent offensive line with the defense that they have plus Jerry Judy, that would be pretty intriguing to me. The only reason why I'd say it might not be very intriguing is you got to go up against Patrick Mahomes in that division and that really limits your ability to, well, win the division and go to the playoffs every year. But, Joel, I like that you went with what I was going for here, so shout out to you. Who do you think is the better quarterback, Aaron Rodgers or... Or Russell Wilson. So I just asked you, who do I think gets traded first? But let's say Denver does wait. And they go back in the well. They're like, all right, I'm going to find an old, reliable veteran. I'm going to trade for him in hopes that you have Peyton Manning 2.0 and win a Super Bowl. Aaron Rodgers type AR. Russell Wilson type RW. Who is the better quarterback at this point? I'll tell you what. I'd rather trade for Russell Wilson because he's younger. But I might actually say Aaron Rodgers is the better QB coming off an MVP season. All right, we got a super chat coming in from Ulra Fire 12 Should the Packers draft Cardarius Tony in the first? You're talking about the wide receiver from Florida. I'll say I like Tony. He's a good player. And if I'm Green Bay, you better figure out a way to keep Aaron Rodgers very happy. But 
I don't know if Tony's the route that I go. And if I'm Green Bay, I look for somebody maybe like a Terrace Marshall Jr. I like Rand, Ron, Rondell Moore. Maybe you have another guy that ends up falling to you. But for Green Bay, they're in this kind of peculiar situation. Or do you go with tackle because you don't know if Bakhtiari is fully healthy. You let go of Rick Wagner. And I actually, I sit here and I'm like, okay, what if somebody like Tevin Jenkins falls to the Green Bay Packers? You take him in round one, and then maybe a guy like Moore or Elijah more falls to you down and in the second round pick what like 62 something to think about that's kind of the route though i'd probably go if i was green bay all right robert you're next up here appreciate the super chat my dude mark my words lawrence number one of course jets get fields at two niners get jones bears trade up for wilson lance falls on broncos lap at nine okay i will mark your words we will take a screenshot of this right now and if you are right we're gonna have, definitely going to have to give you some kudos here. So, as Sam just did, ch -ch -ch. all right, Robert, appreciate the question as always. Now, we partnered up with Newsbreak, and if anybody out there wants an awesome app on their phone, listen up right now. Go to chatsports.com slash newsbreak. Now, I don't care what part of the United States you live in. I don't care what city you live in. I don't care what region. It doesn't matter what your zip code is. This app will be useful for you. Now, if you want more sports content, we got you covered. If you want more, I don't know, politics, if you want to know more about pop culture, the best places to eat, the Newsbreak app is the app for you. So if you guys want to help us out and help yourself out, go to chatsports.com slash newsbreak. I'm going to put this link in the comments. It's also going to be in the description. Now, why should somebody download it? Local news and weather. You got to gotta, gotta know what's going on in your local cities, right? Politics, food, pop culture, the extra sports content, and you can find our chat sports video. So once you go ahead and download the app at chatsports.com slash newsbreak, you go to the search tool, and if you look up your favorite team, then look for the show that we run. So if you're a Cowboys fan, Cowboys Report, Raiders fan, Raiders Report, Dolphins fan, Dolphins Today, 49ers fan, 49ers. Like, we got all these awesome channels here. You can get even more content. Plus, stay up to date what's going on in your city. All right, Jay, what up, my man? If the Bears have average quarterback play, can they go to the Super Bowl? No. Because even though they have average quarterback play, I, the wide receiver, like you have Allen Robinson, you got a bunch of question marks after that. Do they have a good defense? Yes, they absolutely do. The issue is, even with you need, I think, actually elite quarterback play for them to get to the Super Bowl because you still got to go through the Green Bay Packers. And as I see it right now, they're, they're not good enough to beat Green Bay. All right, Marcus, uh, shout out to you. Appreciate the uh, $1.99 Super. What up, Mark? Hey, Mitchell, how are you? Pretty good, Mark. How are you? Given the Vikings have 10 picks in this year's draft, is there any conceivable way they could sign a new quarterback? I'm going to simply say no because you're already committed long-term to Kirk Cousins, and this is a team that doesn't have, we'll say, too much money to be able to go out and spend. you got a lot of needs all around your team, especially an edge rusher. Offensive line could use a little bit of help. Defense as well could use some help. But I'm going to say no. You're, you're committed to Kirk Cousins, and unfortunately for you. Randall Parsons, is Darrell Taylor going to be a good player for Seattle? I, I'll say this, man. I still think it does remain to be seen because for Seattle, you're looking for a player who was a second-round pick in 2020, 6'4", 267 pounds. And I hate saying this because Seattle, every single year when they draft guys, it's always major question marks. Now, is he athletic? Does he fit probably what Seattle's trying to do? Yes. But Seattle is one of the hardest teams to be able to predict what they are trying to do year in and year out in the draft. Will he have a bigger opportunity this year? Yeah, he probably will, especially since some of the players left. But will he ever live up to a second-round pick? I might actually go ahead and say no. All right, if you guys got a question, I want you to subscribe to get on our live mailbag. So hit that big red button underneath this video here. And if you already subscribed, go to YouTube.com slash ChatSportsTV. Join us for the NFL Draft. We will be the number one most watched draft coverage three straight years. And if you want more videos, free videos, seriously, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and subscribe. All right, Rohit, what up, my dude? 49ers upset Rams for division and make a deep run. You think Mostert can have a 1,000-yard season? Can he have a 1,000-yard season? Sure. I mean, any running back, I honestly believe, can have a 1,000-yard season in Kyle Shanahan's system. For Mostert, it's can the offensive line stay healthy? Can the offense stay healthy? Can he stay healthy? And then, yes, I think it's a good equation for that to happen. And then in terms of upsetting the Rams for division, are the Rams the team that you need to upset? I mean, you got a lot of good teams. You got the Cardinals. You got the obviously the Rams, Seattle. Like, 
This is probably the best division in football, but for the 49ers, you're only one year removed from a Super Bowl run. If you stay healthy, if your quarterback performs well, you can make a run at the Super Bowl. All right, we got Ola Fire 12. Appreciate the super free agent targets for the Packers that they can afford. Good question. I mean, if I'm Green Bay, I still want to be able to go out and add another young wide receiver. This is the name that I've been throwing out there a lot, D.D. Westbrook. He's the player that I like in 2019, 2018, had over 60 catches, kind of becomes a more possession receiver, somebody who else can be somebody solid next to Devontae Adams. And then also offensive line, if they don't want to bring back somebody like a Rick Wagner, if if Mitchell Schwartz is healthy, I think that'd be a great signing, especially on the right tackle position for Green Bay. That's probably the route that I would go. All right, we got Holy Angel 026. Do you think it's possible for the 49ers to take fields at number three? I absolutely think it's possible. I mean, San Francisco, they are at Justin Fields Pro Day right now as it speaks, and I get that a lot of people, Schefter included, think that they're going to go Mac Jones, and that might be the route they go. But I think it would be a major mistake if they do decide to go Mac Jones because that makes no sense to me why you give up all that draft capital to go out and get a quarterback that I think is literally going to turn out to be somebody like Jimmy Garoppolo. In terms of Justin Fields, he might be the quarterback that has the highest upside. And when I say highest upside, I mean higher upside than Zach Wilson. I mean higher upside than Trevor Lawrence because from an athletic standpoint, Justin Fields is more athletic than Trevor Lawrence. I don't think I'm taking a shot at him. I'm not saying that Justin Fields is a better quarterback than Trevor Lawrence. I'm saying in terms of athletic ability, I think it's Fields. Let's go to Stress and Sammy here. Should the Chiefs re-sign Brashad Breeland? It depends on money. But if you tell me right now I could bring in Breeland on a one-year kind of prove-it deal, I'll tell you what, I'm a, I'm a lot more interested in that. But also, I think you have to be open to the idea of drafting a cornerback early if you don't go ahead and do it. Now, if you don't bring back Breeland, who had 38 tackles, two picks, nine pass breakups last year, do you take a cornerback early? Do you consider DeAndre Baker a starter? That remains to be seen. Luckily for Kansas City, you could see some cornerbacks fall here in this draft. Now, I think Patrick Tan, he's gone. J.C. Horn, gone. Greg Newsom, actually, at this point, might be gone as well. Newsom might be the one player that you might be able to get at 31. If you want to get ballsy and take Caleb Farley, who was my number one corner before the back injury. That still remains to be seen. Asante Samuel Jr. is more of an inside corner, which sure fills a need, but I mean, for for Kansas City, if you do decide to bring back Breland, maybe you don't go corner, but if you don't bring him back, then maybe you do have to go corner with one of your first two picks. Let's go to Nate Joe 75. Do the Seahawks trade Russell Wilson to the Dolphins for four picks in the 2021 20, draft? Two firsts and a second and a fourth. That's not even close to being enough for Russell Wilson. If you're going to give up four picks, all four have to be first-round picks, and that still might not even be enough. All right, let's go to the Brian Loma. Should the Seahawks go corner in the second round, and what corner should they go with? So I actually think Seattle might be, I don't want to say set at the cornerback position. They decided to bring back a few guys here and there. I think that they're okay at corner and safety. But for you to only have pick number two, four, and seven, I mean, if, I, if I'm Seattle, I'm going to go out and try to get another edge rusher. I'm going to go out and try to get some extra linebacking depth. And I get that you still might want to go out and find another corner, but I'm going to say edge or linebacker. Let's go to DeAndre Jones. Chat Sport, who will be an ideal pick for the Baltimore Ravens? They won and day, or excuse me, day one and day two of the draft. I still like Terrace Marshall Jr. He's definitely been the most common name for Baltimore. But let's say they want to replace somebody like Matt Judon, Jason Owe, I think is also another player to throw out there. But if they go wide receiver, I do think Terrace Marshall Jr. is a name to keep in mind. And then for a second round pick a little bit later on, I mean, if, a, if they don't get the wide receiver that they wanted in the first round, maybe a Rondell Moore, Elijah Moore could fall there. Um, if they decide to trade away Orlando Brown Jr., maybe somebody like, I don't know, Liam Eichenberg or Walker, what's his name, Walker Little or... Dylan Radon, Samuel Cosme, like maybe one of those guys as well. Luckily for Baltimore, they're in a really good spot, I think, in the draft where they could fill both of their team needs here, which I think their two biggest needs are receiver and offensive tackle. All right, super chat from Marcus. Appreciate it, my dude. Thoughts on my mock draft? Creed Humphrey, Kelvin Joseph, Bobby Brown, Daz Newsom, William Sherman, trade Seattle. Okay, so you made a few trades. This is for the Seahawks. So... 
Creed Humphrey, he would be your new starting center over Ethan Posick. You have Kelvin Joseph. I don't know if Joseph falls that far to 109. I know he's got some off-the-field concerns, but in Mel Kuyper's latest mock draft, he went, like, in, I believe, top 42. Bobby Brown adds some depth. Daz Newsome, William Sherman. I mean, I'll give it this. I'll give it probably a solid B grade. You're able to fill some needs here for this team, but you did also make a lot of trades. There's no doubt about that. So you're able to get some extra picks here. But uh, I'll give it a B grade from Marcus. Appreciate the super chat. If you guys want to go down in the comments and grade his mock draft, please go ahead and do so. All right, let's go to Olor Fire. Packers don't draft slash sign a wide receiver. Does Aaron Rodgers want to trade? I'll tell you what. I, if they do what they did last year, then, yeah, I think he's really going to try to get the hell out of there. But they need to be able to figure out a way to address offensive line and address the wide receiver position because you got Devontae Adams. You, you were able to keep Aaron Jones, which I know keeps Rodgers happy as well. But, I mean, there's a lot of good receivers in this year's draft. So there's, I really think, no excuses whatsoever. Let's go to John Harley. Merrick or Owosu at 17, Mitch? If I am a betting man, which I am, I think the more likely pick is Jeremiah Owosu Koromora. Also, if you're a big fan of the Raiders, John, I also want you to check out my show where I break down the top 13 players the Raiders could draft at pick number 17. The link is below, youtube.com slash Raiders Report. 